Jeff Howard here at kiteboarding.com and we've got one of the most simplest questions and most, one of the simple videos we want to do and that is how to in correctly or correctly inflate your kite. Now we've had some questions, we get a lot of people calling that just don't understand the simple factors and that's okay. You need to understand what the kite pressure needs to be at and how to do that correctly. So, yes, I know you've been uh, kiting for many, many years and you know how to do it correctly. Well, we get these questions and I'm telling you, in our repair department and everything else, we love to explain it correctly. So when we look at this, we've got a smaller kite here. This is a seven meter, so we can do in the video and talk about this. A lot of these new manufacturers are coming with a pump gauge and we want to talk about the pump gauge. A pump gauge is to get you close to the area of pressure. Is it correct? I'm not 100%. Every kite is different. Now, let me explain to you why. This is a 7 meter kite. This leading edge is a lot smaller. When you decrease the diameter, you can pump them up to a higher pressure to get the stiffness you need. As that diameter increases and you go up to your 12s and 15s and 19s and your big kites, your leading edges increase. As those increase in diameter, you can pump in like 3 or 4 uh, PSI and you're going to get the stiffness of this kite at about six or seven. So you've got to understand that you cannot pump every single kite to the same pressure. What that means is, is when you pump it up, you've got to make sure you're looking at the kite that it gets the correct shaping so it can get relaunched off the water. The gauge is not always correct. So let me explain to you how to do it. I've got a seven meter here, and what I have is I have it partially inflated here. It's a one pump system, so it's gonna pump up everything, and everything is open. I've got the kite laid out correctly, and what I'm gonna do is make sure that this is a screw valve, that there's no sand underneath here, and we put in. So what I look at when I go to pumping, I'm getting close to it, is you're gonna see that how it starts to take its shape here in the center. The bigger the kite, you're going to start seeing wing tips that do not hold themselves up. You can see the kite still wanting to lay down. So what I'm going to do is I continue pumping, and you'll start seeing the tips rising out on the sides here. Everything's starting to stiffen up. I start to feel it. Got a good little, little pop to it. So most kites, I'm up to pretty close to on the gauge. It's showing about five psi. It's uh, these these are not the highest of quality. As soon as I stop my pump, I look at the look at the pressure. I get that thing to about six to seven, and this is a seven meter kite, and it's tiny. You can hear that. Get that nice sound and pop to it. Now I'm going to take the pump out real quick because I want to show you something. Normally, what happens on a kite is you're going to get a wing tip, and it's going to fold over like this. As soon as it gets enough pressure to hold itself up, good and, good and strong, that's going to allow you that relaunchability. That's what's going to keep this on the, on the water and it's not going to bend over and fold. But as soon as that wingtip wants to hold itself up, that's when I get about hmm, maybe three or four pumps right after that is usually enough. Come out here and check. Make sure that it can hold itself up. On a seven meter kite such as this, you can see how tiny these struts are. Getting this up to the correct pressure with a very small strut is very important as well. That keeps that shaping in that strut. So getting the correct pressure is, what I usually tell somebody is pump it until it wants to hold itself up. As Soon as it keeps itself up there and it holds itself up nice and still on both sides of the kite, go about three or four pumps past that. If you want to go to a bigger kite, and you're talking like your 12s and your 15s, your 14, go about four or five pumps past, maybe even six, but get there to a solid feel. But remember, if this gets too tight and it feels like it's too tight, it probably is. Back off that pressure a little bit, make sure that the kite can hold its shaping. If you go to pick the kite up like this and the kite folds over, you obviously do not have enough pressure. So pump it up. Practice this. Figure out on each one of your kites what is that best correct pressure. They're going to have measurements on there and it's probably going to be, if you're going to be following that gauge, is anywhere between about 8, 5 to 8, 8 to 5, somewhere in that range. Now, the smaller the kite, the higher pressure it can, it can handle. The larger the kite, the lower pressure it can handle. And you will see that that stiffness on that kite. So, be very careful. Make sure that you get them inflated correctly. 
It's something that you can look on, read the manual for each one of your kites and understand that pressure, but please get close to it using that gauge and then check those wingtips bending and making sure when the kite is pulled up onto its side, it can hold itself solid. If they start to fold, that's going to mess up your relaunch ability as well as the performance of that kite. Anyway, that's Jeff Howard here at KiteBoarding.com. If we can help you with any questions, simple, small, whatever it is, please let us know at info at KiteBoarding.com and I'll be happy to do a video for you. Have a great day.